Hello all, welcome to the sixth episode of this Deep Learning with PyTorch series. So in uh, last few videos, we looked into the math behind linear regression and uh, how the gradient descent works in terms of uh, linear regression. And also we have uh, done the code implementation from scratch using NumPy for linear regression. So in the next few videos, we will see how the math works in case of logistic regression and how logistic regression is different from linear regression. And also we will try to do the uh, code implementation from scratch for logistic regression. Now let's get started. So uh, first of all, we will discuss like how the logistic regression is different from linear regression, right? So if you remember in case of uh, linear regression, we are doing W transpose X plus B. So that is kind of we are outputting uh, in the output layer of linear regression, right? Uh, but that is kind of an unbounded value, right? So that can uh, take any values, right? But in case of logistic regression, how logistic regression uh, uh, works is it kind of does the binary classification task by predicting the probability of an outcome or event or for an observation, right? So as we are uh, predicting the output probability, so that probability should be within the range of 0 to 1, right? So probability cannot be any other number uh, which is not beyond, uh, not within the limit of 0 to 1, right? Then what we can also do using this probability, we can also convert that uh, probability to a binary output of 0 to 1. Like we can set a threshold value of 0.5 if the probability is greater than 0.5 then the output is one else uh, zero. So this threshold is kind of a flexible. It's not that you always have to use a 0.5 threshold. So that depends on your uh, domain on which you are working and all the and also to the problem which you are trying to solve using machine learning, right? OK, so uh, this is what it is. So first we kind of give the inputs like X1, X2, X3 are like the features and then we get an output which is Y hat, which is still it is kind of similar to a linear regression, right? And we also denote y hat equals to a that are also uh, for our ease of uh, doing the math and all that. So we are also marking the y hat equals to a, right? Now, if you looked into any of the particular node for uh, logistic regression, specifically this node, you will see there are two operations which are going on in parallel, right? One of them is like not parallel like that will be kind of a sequential one like first of all we will uh, do a linear operation which is same as uh, linear regression like we are doing w transpose x plus b and we are calling it as z then what we are doing is we are uh, passing that z through an fu function so we will see what this function is then we are getting an output of a and then we are calculating the loss right with the actual value which is like y and uh, the predicted value which is like a right so then we get the loss and, uh, like similarly in case of uh, linear regression we can also do the optimization here so that my predicted value is as close as possible to the actual value right so in case of logistic regression this function which i am talking about so that is what we call as sigmoid activation function so the role of this sigmoid activation function is to squeeze the output value within the range of 0 to 1 as I previously mentioned, in case of linear regression, the output value is unbounded, but in case of uh, logistic regression, we need to squeeze the value between 0 to 1, right? So hence this activation function and this activation function kind of helps us to squeeze the value within the range of 0 to 1, right? Now let's look into what this activation function does. So first of all, as I mentioned, we will do the linear operation, which is like W transpose X plus B, then we will use this uh, sigma z. Sigma z is nothing but the activation function. Now the uh, the mathematical uh, derivation of this is one by one plus e to the power minus z. So z is nothing but this w transpose x plus b. So we pass through this uh, z through this activation function to get the output. Now if you if you look this curve, this is the uh, sigmoid activation uh, functions output curve so in the x-axis there is z and in the y-axis uh, th that is the output of the sigmoid activation function so for large values of z we will get the output of sigmoid activation function which would be very close to one 
right? And when the Z is a large negative number, then your uh, sigma Z or the output of the sigma activation function would be approximately zero, right? Now let's see. The, let's do a code implementation and and see the, how the output is look looks like, right? So uh, I have just created a Python function here. So this Python function is uh, just an implementation of this one by one plus e to the power minus z. Then I am passing a range of values uh, to this sigma activation function, starting from minus ten to plus ten, and I am giving a step size of two. Right, so if you see like the first value is minus 10 for that, it is a very small number, right? So which is very close to zero, right? Then uh, for minus eight, it is still very close to zero. So all these values which are like negative large numbers, right? Right. So for that, the value is very close to equals to zero, right? Approximately equals to zero. Now, once I increasing the value like at zero, when the Z is zero, your sigma activation function outputs equals to 0.5, right? And whenever the value is greater than zero, which is uh, this part here, the value is greater than zero. Here, the outputs are uh, getting close to with the more increasing uh, uh, increasing the value of Z, we will see like the output is getting closer to one. So that is the nature of the sigma activation function. So if you can see like the value is kind of squeezed between zero to one in case of negative numbers or a very large positive number also, always we will get the value within the range of zero to one, right? Okay, so. Uh, so for this, using this understanding, we can say that logistic regression is nothing but linear regression plus the sigmoid activation function, where the sigmoid activation function outputs the linear part equals to one when there is a large value of the linear part and it is close to zero when the value is very small or a large negative number, right? Now let's see how the uh, cost function is in case of logistic regression, right? Uh, so the cost function what we are using here is not MSE, right? Or the mean squared error. So what is the problem of if we use the mean squared error, right? So if you plot this mean square error in case of logistic regression with the setup of like a linear part, then the activation function, it will turn out to be a non-convex function. So we do not have a global minima. Uh, so we have, uh, we can also have local minimas, right? So if we use this cost function, it may happen that your gradient descent algorithm may get stuck to a uh, local minima, right? So here it can get stuck, so it may not reach to the global minima. So that's why, because of the nature of this uh, problem, and uh, if we use a mean squared error, the output, the uh, the function which we are trying to optimize is non-convex. That's why we do not use a mean squared error. So what we use is this negative log likelihood, or we can also call it as binary cross entropy loss. So it has this. Uh, uh, the formulation is looks like this, right? So we have uh, like we will take this. Uh, for every loss, for every training examples, we will do a sum between a summation of from one to n, and then we, we with that we have like y multiplied by log y hat. Y hat is the predicted value. Then plus one minus y that will be multiplied by log of one minus y hat, right? So this is what we also call as cross entropy loss. So that we generally use in case of. Uh, logistic regression, right? So if you use that, then your uh, this function is more very close to a convex function and we can do the gradient descent optimization, which we discussed in case of linear regression also, right? Okay. Now just a refresher, like what gradient descent does is like we start from uh, a particular initialization of W and B or weights and biases of uh, which are like model parameters. Then with iterative process and with the help of learning rate, we kind of change the values of W so that it like the cost is getting minimized and in turn our uh, model error is also minimum, right? So uh, now this is kind of a refresher also for using the gradient descent like we initialize the values for w and b then we minimize the loss with the cost function and we then move towards the uh, global minima where the cost is 
minimum, right? So this red point is where the cost is minimum and our job is to reach that position using this gradient descent optimization so that the predicted value is as close as to the actual value, right? Now, uh, if you see like we are using uh, this DW and DB and we need to calculate the derivatives, which we similarly did in case of linear regression also. And once we have that, then we can easily do the gradient descent optimization, right? So uh, so we, what we need to do is we need to take the derivative of loss function with respect to at first with W, right? So in the output, we have only A. So we cannot take the derivative uh, directly with respect to W, right? So using this chain rule, uh, what we can do is we can uh, like using the chain rule, we can decompose this DL by DW in this way, right? Which is nothing but DL by DA multiplied by DA by DW, right? Which we can subsequently also, we can using the chain rule, we can divide it in this way, which is nothing but uh, DL by DA, DA by DZ and DZ by DW, right? So this is quite, this is similar to what my DL by DW is using the chain rule, right? So similarly, we can also uh, calculate the derivative of uh, DB, which is like uh, derivative of loss with respect to B, right? And we can, and uh, like express this using the chain rule as this, right? Now, if you uh, using certain derivative formulas, if you can uh, derive the values, each of this uh, parts like DL by DA will look like this. DA by DZ will be simplified with this expression and DZ by DW is simply will be equals to X and DZ by DB will be equals to one, right? Now, these two things we have already calculated. These two are similar to this and this, right? So this we don't need to calculate. Only these four things we need to calculate to finally get the output, which are uh, which will be DW and DB, right? OK, let me erase this. OK, so once we have this in between values of my derivative like DL by DA, DA by DZ, DZ by DW and then DZ by DB, right? Then we can plug in these values and calculate at first DW, which is which will be equals to A minus Y multiplied by X and DB will be equals to A minus Y, right? So using these values like DW and DB, we can then do the gradient descent optimization and we can minimize the loss so that the output is getting closer to the actual value, right? Uh, yeah, I know this is a bit complex, like how the math, uh, how the derivations or the derivation of this uh, is working on behind the scene. So just to keep this video short, I have written down directly the values. If you want uh, the detailed derivation of this value, so you can just comment. Uh, of this video, I will try to make a detailed video with all the derivations in detail, right? Now, once we have these values, we can straight away uh, do a code implementation using this formula, right? So yeah, in the next video, what we will do is we will try to do the code coding of logistic regression from scratch using NumPy only, and we will see like how the uh, how the math of this derivation of this is kind of helping us to do the logistic regression from scratch. So yeah, that's, that's all I have for this video. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video.